worship experience of Mississippi Boulevard Christian Church, Disciples of Christ. We're so elated to have you gather in your homes and welcome God's house into your house. If you're streaming with us for the very first time, we want to welcome you to the church that is leading, learning, living, and loving without limits, which all of you help us get the word out. If you are streaming in via Facebook Live, take a moment and share our stream and then start a watch party to let those who in your network know that we're worshiping right now. And then if you are streaming through YouTube, we hope that you would become a subscriber today. Just click the link that says subscribe and it'll allow you to connect with the Mississippi Boulevard Christian Church YouTube page. Well, as we begin worship this morning, I want to call you to worship with the words of Psalm 145. I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Let us worship our God and King on this morning in spirit and in truth. Let's go into worship. Please continue standing and join us in the singing of this morning's hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy. <laughs>
landmark scripture for me during this season in all of our lives is 2 Chronicles 7, 14. God says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then God says, I'll hear from heaven, I'll forgive their sins, and I'll heal their land. What a privilege that all of us have to go to God in prayer. And so as we did on last week, I want to invite you to gather with your families in your homes for a time of family prayer. I heard you, I didn't give you enough time on last week. So on this week, as the music is played, I want you to bow in prayer in your homes and talk to the Lord. Pray for a various number of concerns. Pray for your families, for our nation, our communities. Pray for those who are on the front lines, not only healthcare workers. Pray for those who are funeral directors and embalmers who continue to work tirelessly during this time. And I want you to continue to pray for healing to come to our nation. Right in your homes, let's pray. Almighty God, hear the prayers of your people and heal our land. In Jesus' name, it is so, and amen. We believe God will hear our prayers and that God will send a healing to our land. My brothers and sisters, what a privilege it is for us to gather even in our homes to worship. I am mindful of the early church who, because of persecution, could not worship with public gatherings, but had to worship in their own homes. Yes, they studied the word of God. They also prayed. Let us not forget that on the Lord's day, as the church gathered in their respective homes, they shared at the Lord's table. It's in the Christian church, disciples of Christ, that every Lord's Day we celebrate as the affirmation of faith teaches us, the saving acts and the presence of Jesus Christ. We do that 
so that we remain mindful of the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And he invites us all to partake. He is the host at the table, and I hope that you would welcome him in to your homes even now. And so as we prepare to partake of the bread and of the cup, we want to remember what Jesus Christ did 2,000 years ago when he died on the cross, laying down his life and shedding his blood. Let's ask God's blessing as we partake today. Gracious God, we are truly grateful for the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And as we gather in our homes on this Lord's Day, we remember how he laid his life down, how he poured out the blood that reaches to the highest mountain and flows to the lowest valley in order to save a sinful and wretched world. And God, we look forward to that day. We're going to eat and drink this new in the kingdom of heaven. Until then, we ask these things in Jesus' name. And the people of God said, Amen. Well, brothers and sisters, it was on that night Jesus shared the Passover meal with his disciples. He took bread. He blessed it and he broke it. And he gave it to them and said, take, eat. This is my body. Let us eat together. That same hour, in the same manner, Jesus took the cup. In the traditional Passover, it was called the Hallel cup. Jesus gave it new meaning. He said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. <laughs> drink all of it in remembrance of me. Let's drink of the cup together. As often as we eat this bread, and drink this cup, you and I proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. And the church said, Amen. What's happening, Boulevard family? I'm Jeremy Pierre. I know you missed me. I missed you. Yes, indeed. Look, the work of the church goes on. That's why we need you to pay very close attention to this month's announcement. It's important that we stay connected to each other, especially in this season of social distancing. We want you to take care of yourself. So in the event you or a family member goes to the hospital or you have a death in the family, we want you to contact our minister on call. That number is 901 five six nine seven seven two nine or sharon smith at nine oh one two seven two fifty six seventeen hey everybody we know there are those of you who have questions about our outreach look we want you to continue on with the questions we have someone perfect to answer those questions and her name is reverend angel johnson she's doing a wonderful job look we want you to contact her at 901-272-5603 or johnson.angel at the boulevard.org starting april 15th we got something brand new y'all y'all gonna enjoy this it's called the turntable look it's gonna be with pastor and lady turner they're going to be talking all about a plethora of different subjects. Look, let me tell you, it's going to be about faith, homeschooling, health care, mental health, fitness, and physical abuse. That's a lot, y'all. I'm interested. Be sure to catch it on our YouTube channel and our Facebook page. They're going to be live, y'all, April 15th. Tune in. Now, I know at this point in time, we're not worshiping physically at 9 o'clock and 1030 like we usually do, y'all. You got three opportunities, though, to worship with us virtually on our website, theboulevard.org, as well as our Facebook page. Look, we're live every Sunday morning at 1030 a.m. And look, we got another option. One more option. YouTube. YouTube. We're live every Sunday morning, 1030 a.m. For those of you who like YouTube, 
go to our YouTube channel. Don't just watch us there, subscribe to the page so you can keep up with everything that's happening here at the Boulevard. Not only do we have three ways you can worship with us virtually on Sunday morning, but we have several opportunities for you to pray with us during the week. Listen up to this, y'all. Women's Prayer Call is on Tuesday evenings at 7 p.m. and then Wednesday morning at 7.14 a.m. You're with Pastor Turner. Men's Prayer Call is 6 a.m. on Saturday mornings. Boulevard, listen up. You deserve a round of applause, a standing ovation because you have been doing awesome with your giving. And we want you to keep that good job up. Listen up. You have several ways you can give to the Boulevard. You can give electronically through PushPay, our website using PayPal, Cash App, dollar sign Mississippi Boulevard, or through the mail by mailing your love offering and ties to 70 North Bellevue Boulevard, Memphis, Tennessee, 38104. Boulevard, here's your monthly health tip. Now, in this challenging time, we want you to do your part to stay home and flatten out that curve of this COVID-19. Since people who are asymptomatic can spread coronavirus, the Centers for Disease Control recommends that whenever we leave our homes that we cover our mouth and nose with a cloth face cover. This applies to whenever we are in public or if we should venture to the grocery store or to pick up other necessities. The cloth face cover is meant to protect other people in case you are infected. Please do not use a face mask meant for a healthcare worker. Continue to keep about six feet between yourself and other social distancing y'all the cloth face cover is not a substitute for social distancing so you can't go out if you would like to receive a weekly update or devotionals from pastor and lady turner you can email us at info at the boulevard.org and we'll be sure to add you to the list and to get text alerts text midtown or south to 31996 if you're interested in joining our church Send an email to connect at the boulevard.org and a member of our team will be in contact with you. Boulevard family, you know we miss you, but you know we're always connected. Connected by that vine, and that vine is Jesus. Look, stay in touch. We love you. I love you. Pastor Turner loves you. Lady Turner loves you. Look, we're one family. We're leading, learning, living, and loving without limits. My brothers and sisters, we want to thank you for the generosity that you have displayed to God and through the local church in allowing us to continue to carry God's mission forward. I want to challenge you today, even as I thank you for your giving, to continue to rise to the occasion and be a good steward of the resources God has blessed you with. I am very well aware there are many of you who have come under strain financially, and we are believing God that God will meet your needs. Uh, but as the Lord has blessed us and prospered us, I want to challenge us to trust God and honor God's word as God continues to take care of us. There are a number of ways that we've continued God's mission uh, during this particular period of time. Manor Outreach continues to serve 900 households in the greater Memphis area each month. But on top of that, our emergency food box demand has increased significantly. We would average typically 10 emergency food boxes per month. But that demand has increased to 35 boxes per day. And so I want to challenge you to help us meet the challenge even as we continue to support Boulevard member-owned and operated restaurants in order to serve some of the food insecure and vulnerable populations in our city, we know that we can't do it without your generosity. So right now in this moment, go over to PayPal, go to our website to push pay. Uh, I want you to even go over to Cash App and you can give using Cash App. Use the hashtag Mississippi BLVD. Uh, and you can give through Cash App. Please include your name and your address so that we can accurately record your giving. And then you can also mail your giving in to 70 North Bellevue Boulevard, Memphis, Tennessee, 38104. As we get ready to give, let's pray. 
eternal and gracious God, we continue to trust you to take care of us and provide for us. We know ultimately you are the source of all that we have. I pray that you would bless your people, meet the needs particularly for those who are the least, the lost, the left out, even those who have now found themselves as one of the millions of people who are now unemployed. And we're trusting you now through this season to take care of your people. And we're asking these things in Jesus' name. And all the people said, Amen. Go right now and give through Push Pay, PayPal, Cash App. Or prepare to mail in your gift to the address that's displayed on the screen. And let's prepare to be ministered to by our ministry of music.
I want you to come with me to the book bearing the name of the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah 43, verses 16 through 21. Here is what it says. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings forth chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down, they cannot rise. They are extinguished, quenched like a wick. Remember not the former things nor consider the things of old. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The wild beasts will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches. For I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I formed for myself, that they might declare my Praise. I want to talk about a way in the wilderness. Stephen Callahan wrote a book called Adrift, 76 Days Lost at Sea. It's the story of a man who built a vessel that was to sail him through the whole of the Atlantic Ocean. While on his journey, he hit a bad patch of weather and his vessel went down. He lived on a raft for 76 days. But what he discovered that kept him alive was hope. His lowest days were the days that he couldn't see any hope or could not see the possibility of being rescued. His hope literally kept him alive. That's why Hal Lindsey says man can live for about 40 days without food and about three days without water, about eight minutes without air, but only for a second without hope. In Hebrew, a derivative of the word for hope means to twist or to weave just like the strands of a rope, giving it the ability to hold a heavy load securely. What a powerful image of hope as we live under the heaviness and weight of these times where millions of people have been infected by COVID-19, thousands are dead, multiple millions of people are unemployed, and the least of these have been left vulnerable. But what binds us all in this moment is this collective sense of uncertainty where we don't know how long it will last or how it will get to a point of completion. And I think the best way that we can describe this moment is that we are living in a wilderness. The hope that we can take from this text in Isaiah is that our God is able to make a way for us in the wilderness. That's the witness of Israel and the prophet Isaiah in this passage. He lived during a time of international fear and uncertainty. Israel had made a faulty geopolitical alliance. It was failing economically and their failed leadership left the nation vulnerable and ill-prepared to face the threats they were up against. As a result, Israel, God's chosen people, found themselves a servant nation to Assyria because King Ahaz trusted more in himself than in the Lord. As a consequence, the two northern tribes of Israel were taken away into captivity and relocated into what is modern day Iran. Isaiah, as God's prophet, comes onto the scene and for the first 39 chapters, he gives God's people words that many of us would perceive as confrontational. He tells Israel and Judah that they needed to repent, change their ways, turn from their sinfulness and turn back to God or else they would face defeat. And that's exactly what happened when they were led away as captives to Babylon. But the scene changes in chapters 40 through 66 as they are people in exile outside of their promised land with a shattered faith and an uncertain future. So God tells Isaiah to give the people words that would console and comfort them. God tells, is, I, tells the people they had received from the Lord's hand double for their sins. He wants to let them know that they had been through the worst of things. And that as difficult as things have been, brighter days are coming and deliverance is near. But as deliverance was approaching... God didn't want the people to lose sight of who he was to them. This is why at the beginning of chapter 43, God has to tell them, fear not, for I have redeemed you. 
I've called you by name. You are mine. And I think there are those of us who need this reminder in this moment that if God calls us by name, it means God hadn't forgotten about you. But not only does God call us by name, God claims us, for he says, you are mine. And if we belong to God, God takes personal responsibility in taking care of us. In this moment, God has slowed our busy lives down to reacquaint ourselves with the things that matter, particularly our families and friendships, and most of all, our relationship with him. This is so necessary because our relationship with God is going to be the key to us being able to embrace the present and the future. As God navigates us towards deliverance, we must be ever so careful to trust God's providential leadership. Listen, we can't get so caught up in how God has worked in the past that we don't allow God room to do something new and fresh in the present as we head towards the future. This is the declaration of God through the prophet to the people in verses 18 and 19. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? See, verses 16 and 17 gives us testimony and the story that is retold every year of how God liberated his people from Egyptian bondage, leading them out as a free people through the wilderness. That testimony is recalled because it strengthens their faith to know that God is able. But in this season of their sojourn, God wants them to know that this time I'm going to make a way. And I don't want your past testimony to get in the way of your present trajectory. Trajectory determines how high, far and fast you will go. And what God is saying to his people is that as you lead through this wilderness season, let me do something new and fresh in your life so that you come out of this wilderness wiser, stronger and better than you did before this moment. Possibly God is speaking to someone who needs to develop a skill, complete a manuscript for a book, strengthen your prayer life, write out a business plan and chart out a plan to pursue a goal. And God is saying, forget those things that are behind you. Stop resting on your laurels and simply rehashing past testimonies of what I have done in the past. I want to do something new and fresh in your life. Note as well that in the wilderness of these uncertain times, we can be assured of God's provision. Look at the end of verse 19. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. In the Exodus that's alluded to in verses 16 and 17, you will recall that when they left Egypt and began their journey, their first obstacle was the Red Sea. In this moment, God opened the Red Sea and the people walked across this body of water as if it was dry ground. In Isaiah 43, 19, God says, in this moment, I'm going to provide for you making a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. That in this dry place of a wilderness where you can become famished and dehydrated, God's promise is not only to give them water to drink, but to make a way. God says, I'm going to give you rivers in the desert, which would not only give you water to drink, but that which they need to cultivate a place that under ordinary circumstances is not conducive for growth. You'll actually discover that in the original language, the word for wilderness used here is an uncultivated place that is suitable for pasturing sheep and cattle, which means that God is leading his people through a place that might be uncultivated, but it is a place that has what is needed to sustain you while you go through it. <laughs> Here it is. God will never take you where he won't keep you and provide for you. Someone needs to hear that today whose 401k has taken a hit. Someone who's lost a job or who is struggling to put food on the table and take care of your expenses. That in this desert place, God will supply your needs according to his riches in glory. So that your testimony will be as David's. That I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging for bread. It is in these moments we rediscover that our jobs nor our investments, wherever the sources, 
that took care of us. They were only the conduits that God was using to channel his blessings. When we consider how God has blessed us with providential leadership and supernatural provision, we can not keep to ourselves our praise. Verse 20 and 21 conclude this section with God saying, the wild beasts will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches. For I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I form for myself, that they might declare my praise. God is saying in no uncertain terms, if the wild animals honor me because I take care of them, surely the people who I've created, claimed as my own, and who I've taken care of in the wilderness moments, surely they will give me praise. What this moment in the wilderness that we are all experienced should do is cultivate within us a greater sense of gratitude. We really have to live what we've been saying all these years. We've said, praise him anyhow. We've sang William Murphy's lyrics, I vow to praise you through the good and the bad. We've quoted, I'll bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth and give thanks in every circumstance for this is the will of God according to Christ Jesus. Now, if we have said all of that, we have to live it by giving God praise in the wilderness as he brings us to the other side. Last May, Bridget and I took Josiah and Savannah to Disney World and spent most of our time in the iconic Magic Kingdom. Both Josiah and Savannah quickly developed a love for roller coasters. But there was one called Big Thunder Mountain Railroad that my son didn't care for. Mind you, it was not a ride that had the steepest drops, but it did have several moments during which the ride took us through some darkness. In those moments, he became afraid and fearful. So much so that when the ride ended and the car opened, he got out of the car, stood on the pavement and said, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> and when I thought about that moment, I reflected on some of the other rides we took with them that had steeper drops, but he could see and anticipate what was ahead. On this particular ride, he couldn't see every twist, turn, and dip, so he became a little bit afraid. So at the end of it, he had to tell Jesus, thank you. In this season where we can't see the twists, turns, dips, highs, lows, mountains, and valleys, this season that gets dark and for which we don't know how long it will last, let's be sure to give God our thanks and praise because he is the only one who can make a way in the wilderness. We ought to sing that gospel song that says, it could have been me outdoors with no food and no clothes all along without a friend or just another number with a tragic end, but he didn't see fit to let any of these things be. Every day with his power, he keeps on keeping me. So you ought to stop in your home right now and say, thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Well, my brothers and sisters, others who are streaming on this day, God can make a way in the wilderness. God wants to make a way in your life. But I cannot end our time today without introducing you to the one who is the way, the truth, and the life, who loved you so much that he was willing to die on the cross to save you. And if you want to give him your life, we want to give you an opportunity to do that. That if you can confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved today, right now, this moment. And I want to give you an opportunity to respond by faith to that invitation. Then there are others of you, even during this time of virtual worship, we want to extend to you the opportunity to become a part of Mississippi Boulevard Christian Church Disciples of Christ. If you're in either one of those two categories, you want to give your life to Jesus or you want to unite with Mississippi Boulevard Christian Church, I want you right now to send an email to connect at the boulevard.org and we'll be certain and sure to respond to that email to get you connected with Jesus Christ 
and with our church. We're trusting God for the decision that you will make on this day. Well, my brothers and sisters, as we come to the end of this time, I want to continue to encourage you in your participation and engagement with our church through our various online platforms. We encourage you to connect with your life groups through the platforms that we have established for you to do so. Also, uh, we want you to tune in on Wednesdays at 12 noon uh, in the time slot that we normally have set up for the message in the middle. It's an experience that my wife and I have called the turntable. We're taking on real issues and providing relevant inspiration that can be a blessing to you during this time and during this season. And then next Sunday, please log on with us on YouTube, through the boulevard.org, and through our Facebook page on Facebook Live and join us in this time of worship. And our young people, I wanna remind you to go over to Instagram and connect with the Boulevard Nexus Youth Instagram page uh, and you can begin your experience right at 12 noon. Well, as we get ready to close our time on today, don't log off too quickly. Our choir is going to come right back and bless you with a song that will take you on the rest of this week. But I want to bless you as we leave this time. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace from this time forth, even forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Why don't you take a moment and greet your neighbor and tell them, hey, how you doing? Glad you came to service this morning, yeah? Come on. Don't you?